refer to the cardiac arrhythmia service because you have an abnormal heart rhythm coming from the upper chambers of your heart called atrial fibrillation. Many times, this abnormal heart rhythm can be fixed with an ablation procedure. The ablation procedure is done through the veins in the legs. At the end of the procedure, all of the tubes or catheters will be removed and closure devices may be placed on top of the veins to plug up these holes. These closure devices are collagen plugs that will dissolve over the next several weeks. You cannot see these devices and they do not need to be removed. If you press very hard over these areas, you may feel a little marble-sized spot there and this is normal. This will go away over the next several weeks. On the skin itself, you will just see little puncture sites as if you had big intravenous lines there. These will go away over the next several days. The areas will be covered with big pieces of gauze and some tape. The day after the procedure, the tape and the gauze dressing will be removed and you may shower and wash this area with soap and water. Do not scrub directly at this site. Instead, just let the water and soap run gently down your leg. We also do not want you to sit in or submerge the site in water for one week to avoid infection. This includes baths, swimming, hot tubs, lakes, oceans, and pools. After you shower, do not put powders, moisturizers, ointments, or lotions on the groin site for a few days. The site may stay open to air without another bandage on top, but you may also cover this if you wish. It is normal for this groin area to be mildly tender or bruised after the procedure. The bruising may get worse and expand down your leg. There may even be some slight swelling. All of this is normal. The areas should not be swollen more than the size of a marble and should not be severely painful. These areas should not be red or warm to the touch. If you notice any drainage, if the area becomes painful or hot to the touch, or if you see signs of infection such as fever, you should call our office. Activity-wise, you are restricted from heavy lifting or strenuous exercise, also for one week. Heavy lifting is considered more than 10 pounds, and strenuous exercise includes running, cycling, elliptical, rowing, yoga, golf, pickleball, using a lawnmower, etc. Walking is okay. These restrictions are to protect your groin site. And lastly, we say no driving for two days given the repetitive motion of using the pedals and the pressure this puts on your groin. The majority of the time, the bad things that can happen during the procedure will not happen. This is a good thing. With ablations for atrial fibrillation specifically, there is a complication which can occur within the first few weeks after the procedure that is worth talking about. The burning of the tissue is done along the backside of the heart which sits next to your esophagus or food pipe. This can cause your esophagus to get irritated from the ablation to the point where an abnormal connection called a fistula could form between your heart and your esophagus. If this were to happen, you would have fever, chills, night sweats, chest pain when you eat, choking on your food, or you would be coughing up blood. If any of these things were to happen, you should go to the emergency department. If you are in any emergency department other than MGH, tell them to call your doctor before you are treated. The reason we say this is because if you are in a small community hospital that does not perform ablation procedures, they may not recognize this as a complication which is why we say to have them call your physician. The good news is that the chance of this complication occurring is very small, less than 1% nationally, and here at MGH, the incidence is much less. Your physician takes precautions during the procedure to prevent this from happening by carefully monitoring the temperature in your esophagus. Post-procedure, we may put you on high-dose Prilosec or Omeprazole for six weeks. You have likely seen commercials for Prilosec on television and it is usually taken for acid reflux. We give it in this situation with the thought being it will reduce the risk of the acid washing back and irritating your esophagus further after the procedure. You will take Prilosec 40 milligrams twice daily for six weeks post-procedure. We will send this to your pharmacy, but it is also available over the counter. The pharmacist will tell you what your insurance company says. The pharmacist will tell you what your insurance company says about the cost and which option is cheaper. If you are already on a medication for acid reflux, we may increase this medication instead or have you take a similar medication for six weeks after the procedure. After an ablation for atrial fibrillation, it can take up to three months for the scar tissue to heal and it is not uncommon to experience AFib after the procedure. 
This does not mean that the procedure did not work. Inflammation and tissue swelling often just take time to heal. We encourage patients who use monitors like a blood pressure cuff that also has a heart rate reading, an Apple Watch or Fitbit, or a cardio mobile device to continue monitoring their heart rates and rhythms at home. If you notice you are in AFib based on symptoms or on these monitor readings, do not panic. We recommend that you wait a few hours and see if you flip back into a normal rhythm on your own, as most patients do. However, if you remain in AFib for more than 24 hours, that would be a reason to call the office to talk about what to do next. Because AFib has the potential to come back over the first three months following the ablation procedure, it is very important to not miss any doses of your blood thinner during this time. Lastly, your heart sits inside of a sac called the pericardium. This gets inflamed during the procedure. Some patients notice chest discomfort after the procedure, especially when they take a deep breath in or change positions. We call this pericarditis, which is a fancy way to say that sac is inflamed. Sometimes we will order steroids to help reduce this inflammation either as one dose to take the day after the procedure or as a dose pack, which is a tapering dose over several days after your procedure. Follow the instructions on the prescription. Additionally, if you feel symptoms of pericarditis, it is okay to take ibuprofen or Advil or Motrin, three tablets, three times a day. You may have been told by your pharmacist in the past that you should not take ibuprofen with your blood thinner. While ibuprofen can make you more prone to bleeding, we would not want you to take it every single day for the rest of your life while you are on a blood thinner. It's more than okay to do so in the short term. Tylenol typically does not help with these symptoms. If you find that after a few doses of ibuprofen, this chest pain is not getting better, or that you still need ibuprofen after three to four days, these are things your doctor would want to know. Finally, many patients are discharged the same day as their procedure, depending on the time their case is finished, how long the procedure took, what they found during the procedure, and how you feel after the procedure. If you meet our criteria for a safe discharge, you may be sent home the same day. Otherwise, you will be kept overnight for monitoring and will likely be discharged the following day. Someone from the team will see you prior to your discharge and will review all of your medications and any new prescriptions that you might need. If you are able to be discharged the same day as your procedure, you will need someone to come pick you up from the hospital as you will not be able to drive home. This person will need to be available to review your discharge instructions in person as you will just be waking up from surgery. You will also need a companion to stay with you at home overnight. If you were discharged the same day, someone from your doctor's office will call you the following day to check in and to see how you're feeling. You should also plan to weigh yourself at home the following day to ensure that you are not retaining fluid from the procedure. The person calling will ask about your weight, your groin sites, your prescriptions, and can answer any questions that you might have. You will then have a follow-up visit with your doctor or their advanced practice provider in the office in 6 to 12 weeks. If you are having any symptoms, please call the office. If you have any general questions, you may call the office or send a message through Patient Gateway. Please note, we do not check Gateway messages overnight or on weekends.